for the first time all groundwater systems will need to perform sanitary surveys. To tell us what that means to your utilities is Sean Stewart. Sean is a liaison for the Public Water Supply and Concentrated Animal Feeding Operation Programs at the TCEQ. He holds a bio, bioenvironmental science and agricultural management degree from Texas A&M and has been with the TCEQ since 1999. Sean, you've got a lot to tell us, so we'll let you get started. Thank you, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Um, as Mike mentioned, I am going to uh, discuss uh, sanitary surveys and significant deficiencies. Um, I'm going to uh, tell you the details about those. And as uh, John Schilwachter and Sean Abels have already told you, those, those are components of the federal groundwater rule. So um, we're going we're gonna to dive into the details and, and, and tell you exactly how the federal groundwater rule will impact sanitary surveys. Um, first of all, the groundwater rule requires states to conduct sanitary surveys. It requires states to conduct sanitary surveys and include eight elements. We'll talk about those eight elements in a future slide. I want you to know that sanitary surveys um, are, are not anything new. In Texas, we call sanitary surveys CCIs. Uh, for you operators out there, you, you probably know exactly what we're talking about. You've participated in them. Um, if you haven't, just be ensured that we have been doing this and, and we will continue to do it in accordance with the federal groundwater rule. So that's one component of the groundwater rule is sanitary surveys. Another component is, as John already mentioned, is surveys have to be conducted every three years for community water systems and every five years for non-community water systems. Now this is the, the minimum frequency established in the groundwater rule. So at minimum, we'll be out there every three years for, non, for community and every five years for non-community. However, we may visit your site more frequently. In addition, we may actually come out and conduct an investigation that's not a sanitary survey. We may come out and do a complaint investigation. We may do a focus investigation. There's, there's, a numerous, um, there's numerous investigations that we may conduct. But for the groundwater rule, it's sanitary survey, and the minimum requirement is three and five years. And here in Texas, that's what we have been doing for years. Next, the groundwater rule requires states to identify significant deficiencies. So what we did to to um, meet the requirements of the groundwater rule, we looked at our own rules, 30 Texas Administrative Code, subchapter D. I encourage every one of you to take a look at those rules. We're gonna look at the uh, details of the significant deficiencies in a future slide and go over them in detail, but please, please look at your rules and become familiar with significant deficiencies. Um, so, our significant deficiencies are identified in 30 TAC, subchapter D, as I mentioned. Uh, another component of the groundwater rule is that we have to notify groundwater systems of any significant deficiency within 30 days. So, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do it in the exit interview process. Those of you who have been through a sanitary survey or CCI know that when an investigator finalizes his, inve his or her investigation, they generally give you an exit interview form and it outlines the deficiencies. So we will do that uh, at the very end of our sanitary survey or our CCI. And if we don't do that, we will notify you within 30 days. Another component is that groundwater systems have 30 days to consult with the state. So after a significant deficiency is identified, you have 30 days to work with the state on a corrective action plan or to discuss the details of the significant deficiency. So who will that be? That will be the investigator that conducted your investigation. I encourage you to keep the line of communication open with your investigator. Another component of the groundwater rule is complete corrective action or be in compliance with the corrective action plan within 120 days of written notification. So how are we going to do that? Well, what you can do, depending on the significant deficiency and what it takes for you to correct the deficiency, you can either correct the deficiency prior to 120 days or enter into a corrective action plan with the state. 
So what's a corrective action plan? In Texas, we, we issue notices of violations. We describe the deficiency. We give you what we think is a sufficient corrective action, and we specify the time frame. That's a corrective action plan, um, and it will be in the form of a notice, notice of violation generally sent to you via certified mail. Next, you may be required to notify customers if you fail to comply with a significant deficiency or you fail to correct the significant deficiency within a 12-month period. So you have to do public notification and every year thereafter that you do not correct the violation, you have to notify the public as well. We mentioned eight elements of a sanitary survey. What are those eight elements? Well, the eight elements are the same elements that that we've been using historically when conducting a sanitary survey. The first one is source. Source, that's the well. We're going to come out, we're going to look at your well, we're going to look at the ceiling block, the um, um, well casing, screening vent. We're going to look at receptors that are nearby, make sure there's no potential sources of contamination. We're going to look at your treatment process. For some of you, it's, it's a simple process. You inject chlorine. Others may have a more sophisticated process depending on the chemical makeup of your water. We're going to evaluate that. Distribution. We're going to go out in your distribution system. We're going to take a pressure reading. Um, we're going to evaluate the, the distribution for, for leaks and, and other potential problems. We're going to take a look at your pumps. We're going to evaluate those for leaks. We're going to ensure they have adequate amount of capacity. Um, so be assured we will be out in the field looking at those items. Finished water storage. We're going to look at your storage tanks. You know, do they meet AWWA standards? Is the roof hatch locked? Um, is the overflow sufficient? Monitoring and reporting. We're going to ensure that you're taking those routine samples. We're going to also make sure that you're reporting those samples. System management. We're going to make sure that you're maintaining the the, the proper records that's required by the groundwater rule. Operator compliance. We're going to make sure that you're, you have the operators you need, the, the level of, of certification required by our rules. We're going to make sure that, that you have enough operators and make sure that those operators spend enough time in your facility. All in accordance with, with the rules. Again, 30 TAC subchapter, two nine, subchapter D. We also mentioned the significant deficiencies, and that's probably what you really want to know. What are they, and what does it mean if you identify one? Now, this isn't going to be the most exciting part of, of this presentation, but I want you to see the significant deficiencies, and I want you to hear the significant, significant deficiencies, and I want you to go back and look at your rules after this presentation today. Some of these are abbreviated. They're not verbatim from the rule. But we had to fit it into the slide, and, and so it's, it's not a complete um, description. So, so please do go back and take a look at those rules. But I'm going to give you a, an overview of those significant deficiencies. What we try to do in meeting the groundwater rule is look at our rules. Again, 30 TAC 290 subchapter D, and, and pick out rules that actually meet the intent of the federal groundwater rule. And that's what we did. The, rule, the groundwater rule requires that we have at least one significant deficiency in each of, the, each of the eight elements I just mentioned. So let's go through that list. The first one is source. The rule citation is 29041C1A, no well site which is, in with it, which is within a 50 feet of a tile or concrete sanitary sewer, sewage appurtenance, septic tank, storm sewer, or cemetery, or which is, in, which is within 150 feet of a septic tank perforated drain field. 